So in a previous video, we took a look at how we can take a free time MIDI performance and conform that to a static BPM. And I think for the most part, with respect to modern production, that would be the most likely scenario that would happen uh, in terms of needing to get that performance to a static BPM. But I wanted to take a look at one more thing, one other potential workflow that might come in handy. So let's say that the end goal was that you didn't want to have a static BPM in that performance. In this case, we have the exact same piano example. Well, I actually have redone it, but it's, it's the exact same principle. We have a BPM, a tempo map, where we have varying degrees of tempo in terms of the difference. In this case, in this bar, we're at 94.5804, and in this one, we're at 79.5251. So what I wanted to look at in this video is saying, okay, well, I like the natural performance. I like the, the difference between not being locked to a static BPM, but quite simply, it's just, it's too much. And I would like to actually decrease that a little bit, almost shrink down the differences between these tempos. So this is something that we can do as well. I'm going to close the editor for a moment. Let's make our tempo track quite large. And also let's just zoom out a little bit here. So here we have the difference in terms of our BPM. Now, one thing that you can do with the tempo track, which is pretty cool, actually, let me just scoot this over a little bit, is that if you select everything over here, the way that Studio One treats the tempo track, and more specifically, the, the nodes themselves, is that we can also apply the transform tool. So I'm gonna highlight everything over here, or you could just use uh, Command A or Control A, and I'm gonna use Option T or Alt T, which is going to bring up my transform box. So now this is basically highlighted everything. Now the key here is that I want to leave my instrument part. I actually want to leave this in the time base beats mode because we're making adjustment to this global track, this tempo track, let's click, hold, and drag, and notice that I'm shrinking the difference between these. So we still have some variation, it's just not as much. So maybe instead of it being 10 BPM or 15, I just want it to be, maybe I want it to be like this amount of difference. So now in this case, we're at 94, and with this one, we're at 91, this one, we're at 94, and this one, we're at 94. Actually, let's undo that. Let's kind of split the difference between this and maybe something like here. So now we have 94, this one is 88, this one is 94, and this one is 95. Okay, so we still are maintaining some of the differences with respect to the tempo map in this original performance, but we've compressed it. We've made it smaller so that it's not as drastic, but it still has a bit of a natural feel. Now, the great thing with this type of workflow is that obviously this can now be used in a grid-based workflow, but there's one thing that we have to make sure of. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Let's open up our browser. Let's navigate to the loops, and I've just located a drum mix over here. We'll play this quickly. Okay, so this is an audio loop that I just found in the drums. I'm gonna drag and drop this into the arrange window. So now you can see in a second, we're gonna have this icon here, which is indicating that there is some time stretching of some sort happening. And this is obviously set to a drums mode, but now this drum loop will follow the BPM. If I select this event and I make sure that my snapping is on and my loop is enabled, and if we have the click track open as well, you can see our tempo jumping around, but this loop is following everything. So one thing that I might want to do in this particular case is, and this is where you kind of need to be aware of this in general. In this case, I want to make sure that um, if I'm using this, for example, as a four bar loop, this tempo information, I've only mapped out these four bars, but after that, you can see that it just becomes a static BPM. So if I wanted to conform this and I wanted to use it, I'm going to select everything, hold alter option, we get this little hand, and now I can copy and drag this all the way across, so now I've got two bars. I'm gonna select everything and choose the duplicate option. And I'll do this a couple times. So now we've basically just copied this exact same pattern over here. We've just copied this out a number of times. Now I can duplicate this out as much as I want and I could duplicate this drum loop out as much as I want. And now if we go back to the beginning, So if I wanted to build a whole production, 
based around this free time performance that we've compressed a little bit so that the differences aren't as drastic, that's something that I could do. The only thing we have to make sure we do uh, is we have to make sure that we select all of the tempo information and we duplicate it so that the embedded tempo against our loops and our instrument parts that it will continuously be following. And it all really starts off with the cool option to be able to select these automation nodes and use the Alt T or Option T transform to just, you know, minimize the difference between the peaks and the valleys of this tempo and to kind of give it so it's got a little bit of a vibe still happening in terms of a free time performance. It's not a 100% static. And then, of course, everything will follow as long as your instrument track is set to beats and as long as your uh, audio tracks are set to time stretch. We're just kind of splitting the difference between these and then we can sequence against our whole entire grid-based production. Uh, but we're just having a little bit of a differentiation between these two different parts in the time. I think I flattened it out completely here, but anyways, you get the point. That's just something I wanted to cover in case you would fall in the other side of the camp that might want to maintain a free time performance and just kind of minimize those differences. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.